So, mm. so we're going to ask Lindsay now from DFID to sort of uh, build on that. But um, so what, what I mean, what I think I think the most interesting areas that you came up was actually the last bit, which is about this convergence, because I, I mean, I, in, when I speak to large businesses, um, there's very much that theme, which is actually securing long term supply chains mm. that actually mm. we're, in a, we're entering a, a completely different era of uh, climate change and the need for companies to actually uh, secure long term relationships. Mm. So, so there, there definitely is a movement, but it's a question of whether that movement is actually going to support poor people or, or still be exploitative. So I think there's, there's a dynamic to understand that. Mm. But Lindsay, where, where is uh, Diffid on this? Because I was on a panel with uh, Andrew Mitchell last week, or a couple of weeks ago, on uh, uh, private sector involvement in, in emergency relief. So, so there's definitely this whole movement within Diffid to say, actually, there's this existing sector out there. How do we, how do we work with it? But how do we avoid just uh, it being exploitative in terms of supporting gov uh, companies to make more money? And we've seen these various areas where sort of there's the role of supporting governments in the in the in the south, but also supporting companies. Where where are you in all this? Um, well, I mean, I I think that it's a really um, it's a really pertinent point at which to kind of uh, discuss uh, Diffid's involvement in value chains and Diffid's involvement uh, in private sector more broadly. Um, Diffid's uh, work on the private sector has uh, been ramped up significantly in the last year since the change of government. Um, but DFID has been involved in value chain development and uh, work on value chains for several years. So that's more of a sort of uh, uh, core part of our, uh, our work. Um, I think in terms of what I found useful from the presentation and from, uh, from the glance I've had at the book, um, I found it really interesting to look at the way in which the um, upgrading had been broken down. I thought that was a, a really useful tool. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, and I think that historically, uh, perhaps donor interventions have focused very much on this kind of horizontal coordination that Chris talked about um, and sort of bringing poor people together into groups to try and access uh, value chains and not necessarily understanding the full picture of uh, all the different interventions that, 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 um, that were mentioned. Um, it's, it's absolutely evident that it's a, it's a checkered picture. You know, there's not success stories. We're not falling over success stories. Um, and partly that's a, a, an issue of measurement, um, we, as, you, as you identified. Um, but also, you know, we, I, I think that there have been problems in understanding fully the role of government, the uh, fully understanding the, the different actors, what, why, um, why uh, businesses might get, want to get involved with donors. Um, uh, I had an experience of working in, in Kenya doing some research at, uh, at a time where donors were trying to um, bring smallholders into uh, su export supply chains and get them up to a, a standard um, and, and, and donors were running around trying to find groups of people. You know, they're getting church groups. You know, they're just bringing all sorts of people together to, to, to try and get them into, into value chains. And, it, and, and that just hasn't, you know, that's just not worked. So I think the point about um, making sure that you're, you're not choosing niche products is, is absolutely hugely important. Um, I think probably the most important point that... that um, I heard is this issue of the business case. What are really identifying what the the different imperatives are for, for the actors to get involved? Why are businesses wanting to get involved with donors? Why are donors wanting to get involved with um, businesses? I I agree with you. You know, Diffid has got companies knocking on our door every day of the week wanting to work with us, and that's fantastic. You know, we've got but we've got to be we've got to make sure that we understand what it is that that we can, you know, how we can um, have an impact on poverty, um, as well as just, you know, encouraging their CSR or inclusive business activities. Um, and I think that we, we should be absolutely, you know, clear that all that donors can do is have a transitory, catalytic um, role. We, we, you know, value chains will, own, will exist only in the private sphere. Um, we should be there to reduce risks, to encourage entrance, to uh, possibly work on the enabling environment, but we should not be there to pick winners, we should not be there to subsidise companies, we should not be there to, um, to, to have the only, you know, the, create the only um, 
uh, funding for, for a particular market. Um, so this business case, I think, is, is absolutely imperative. Um, and then the final point I wanted to make was just this broader challenge of, of, of working with businesses as development partners. Um, I agree that there's a convergence of terms. You know, increasingly, research on this is being led by businesses. You know, Newmont Ghana have just produced a report on their impact on poverty. Um, Unilever famously have done a lot of work. SAB Miller, that these are the, you know companies are measuring and and and, and publishing on the, their impact on on poverty, but you know businesses are not used to filling in donors log frames. You know this is a huge, you know it's it's a, it is a, it can, remains a very different um, uh, dialogue, um, very different language that we speak, and uh, nor do I think that businesses should have to fill in log frames. You know, if we if we want to have uh, value chains to have an impact on poverty, we've got to um, we as donors have got to to to, to measure that and, and ensure that 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 has it um, that, that impact occurs, and that um, businesses have got to get on with the the job of doing businesses. And uh, finally, the the I was just interested, Jonathan. You you said something about beneficiaries, and I just thought. Are we really talking about beneficiaries, or are we talking about business people? You know, if the people in the value chains are business people. Should we be talking about them as beneficiaries? You know, so I, I, I think you know that's just a, a, a sort of point to, to, to leave it on.